Mm, that's drunk. I've made over 500 review videos for this channel so far, and I still keep finding Super Nintendo platformers I haven't covered yet, with titles like Harley's Humongous Adventure. So Harley makes me think of Harley Davidson motorcycles, Humongous makes me think of Lord Humongous from Mad Max 2, and Adventure makes me think this might be an RPG. Hey, that sounds awesome! But nope, this is just another platformer, but thankfully it's not all that bad. It's not all that great, but it's not all that bad either. You play as Harley, your typical rad dude from the 90s who may or may not be related to the rad dude on the cover of Kid Chameleon, only this kid's a genius who somehow invents a shrink ray, but apparently he's not that smart because he accidentally shrinks himself and destroys the machine in the process. So you play through the game as Tiny Harley, going around your own house collecting parts for your machine so you can repair it and presumably reverse the shrinking process. You get three lives and one continue to use across 20 levels, no saves or passwords here, and it's the typical platforming stuff, B jumps, X is to use your jetpack, which is a nice bonus, A is a projectile attack, and the L and R buttons are used to flip through the different weapons you can pick up, which are household objects like nails, thumbtacks, rubber bands, and marbles, and they all do different things, and as you progress through the game you learn which weapon works best for each enemy type. For instance, the marble is going to work best here since you can drop it straight down. You also eventually find firecrackers too, so you can make stuff go boom. However, Harley's Humongous Adventure is one of those games where you take one glance at the screen and say, eh, this is pretty lame, and I don't blame you, the visual style falls kind of flat, but it does need to be pointed out that the enemies and bosses you run into here look like something you'd see in a claymation game, like Claymates, and that's because the enemy models were made by that same dev team. The boss in particular is interesting because it's the same boss that keeps coming back, but he's replacing his own body parts with stuff, like a spring for legs or some sort of cannon thing that replaces his eyes? But yeah, other other than the enemies, stuff like the settings, environments, and your own character sprite are all kind of blah. The controls are fine, they're about what you'd expect in a game like this, but with one glaring flaw, you have to come to a complete stop to turn around and fire your weapon in the other direction, and it's really annoying. You'll try and jump and use your attack when an enemy passes and comes after you, and you'll turn around to face them and you'll end up facing the wrong way more times than not. Ugh, so obnoxious. And what's with these flies trying to vomit on you? That's some bizarre enemy design. Other than that, the controls are okay, and that's mostly thanks to the wide open level design that allows you a ton of freedom to move around. Many of the levels are huge, and these machine parts could be absolutely anywhere, but there's no time limit, so you can take your time and collect all the different weapons, and these nuts that give you an extra life when you reach 100. You'll be using your jetpack a lot, and the controls can feel a little loose at times, but it's still pretty fun to use. Bear in mind you're only allotted a certain amount of fuel per level, and when you're out, you're more than likely out until the next level, so you could essentially softlock yourself into a game over, because there are certain levels where you have to use the jetpack to get to the next spot. I didn't run into this myself, the fuel is pretty generous, but I could see this happening to someone, and they would end up writing the game off entirely as a result. Anyway, there's other levels here, like where you're riding a jumping tank, or flying flying around in the air ducts, or floating around in bubbles above a bathtub, or swimming underneath the kitchen sink. It does get pretty hard at times, but the most frustrating part for me, more often than not, is just finding the machine part so I could move on with the game, but that definitely wasn't a deal breaker for me or anything. There are plenty of checkpoints here and there in the form of these bells, so that's handy. So yeah, Harley's Humongous Adventure is extremely average. I don't think it's as good as other platformers like Claymates or Plock or Artie Lightfoot, the latter two I looked at a few weeks ago, but it's definitely not as bad as stuff like Incantation or Bubsy. I'd put it in the same category as stuff like Dino City or Rocky Rodent, and i describe those games as good enough. Not worth going out of your way to play, but not awful, just good enough. And Harley's Humongous Adventure is good enough. And I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.